Now that we've explored the first portion of Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 through chapter 11 verse 9, we should turn to the second major section, the new order in Genesis chapter 9 verse 18 through chapter 11 verse 9. Moses' account of the new order in chapters 9 through 11 divides into two basic units. On the one hand, Genesis chapter 9 verse 18 through chapter 10 verse 32 focuses on the sons of Noah. On the other hand, Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 9 concern the defeat of the city of Babel. Although these passages may seem unrelated at first, we will see that they actually work together to create a pattern for the new order of the world. They set forth the central features of world history from that time forward. Let's look first at the account of the sons of Noah and the contribution it makes to this portrait of the newly ordered world. Moses' record of the sons of Noah in chapters 9 and 10 of Genesis consists of a title and two main sections. In chapter 9 verses 18 and 19, we find a title which indicates that this portion of Genesis focuses primarily on Noah's three sons and how they were distributed over the earth. In line with this title, Moses' record of Noah's sons divides into two main sections. In the first place, the story in chapter 9 verses 20 through 29 sets forth distinctions among the sons. And in the second place, chapter 10 verses 1 through 32 describe the distribution of Noah's sons and their descendants. It will be helpful to look at these sections separately. Chapter 9 verses 20 through 29 is that well-known passage in Genesis that speaks of the curse on Ham's son Canaan. Listen to what Moses wrote in Genesis chapter 9 verses 24 through 27. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan. He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. May God extend the territory of Japheth. Put simply, this narrative reports the events that led to a major distinction among the descendants of Noah. Noah cursed Canaan, the son of Ham. Canaan would be the lowest of slaves to his brothers. Yet Noah pronounced blessings on his other sons, Shem and Japheth, because they had treated him with respect. Moses included this story in his description of the new order after the flood because the entire human race came from the three sons of Noah. The distinctions made here led to the dynamics of human relationships seen from this time forward in biblical history. This outlook on the distinctions among Noah's sons is confirmed by chapter 10, the distribution of Noah's sons. Looking to the generations which came along after the days of Noah, in Genesis chapter 10, Moses gave a sample listing of the places where the descendants of Ham, Shem, and Japheth went throughout the world. According to Genesis chapter 10, the Japhethites occupied territories to the north, northeast, and northwest of Canaan. With a few exceptions, the Hamites moved toward northern Africa, and the special son of Ham, namely Canaan, dwelled in the land of Canaan, Israel's promised land. The Shemites, or Semitic people, largely occupied the territories of the Arabian Peninsula. The record of Genesis chapter 10 is highly selective and designed to provide only general patterns of migration. But these general patterns were enough for Moses to illustrate some long-term patterns that characterized human interaction in the new order after the flood. Now that we have seen the literary structure of Moses' attention to Noah's sons in Genesis chapters 9 and 10, we're in a position to look at the second portion of the new order after the flood, the defeat of the city of Babel in chapter 11 verses 1 through 9. The story of the Tower of Babel divides into five symmetrical dramatic steps. The first step of verses 1 and 2 begins with the vast majority of humanity together. But by contrast, this narrative ends in verses 8 and 9 where we learn that God dispersed humanity over the earth as he confused human language. Just how did humanity move from being together with one language to being scattered and having many languages? 
The middle portion explains what happened. The second step of verses 3 and 4 reports a plan which the people had. They intended to build a city with a great tower reaching to heaven so that they would be famous for all time and utterly invincible. Nevertheless, the fourth step of this narrative in verses 6 and 7 balances this human plan by reporting God's counter plan. God called his heavenly army to attack the city by confusing the language of the people and thereby to stop the construction of the city and its tower. The turning point of this story appears in verse 5 where God investigated the city and its tower. Once God saw the city and the proud plans of its inhabitants, he determined to bring an end to the city of Babel. So we see that according to Moses, life after the flood was far from the paradise we might have expected. On the contrary, the new order includes complex interactions among different groups of human beings. It also includes more defiance of God, as well as God's eventual defeat of those who defy Him. Although these structures of the new order may seem strange to our modern ears, we will see that they spoke rather plainly to the experiences of the Israelites to whom Moses first wrote these chapters.